Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Dilmer again, and today I'm really excited because I'm gonna continue the videos with the XR Toolkit. In today's video, I'm going to be introducing you to the XR Device Simulator that is going to allow us to basically mimic what we see and do on the device, but actually by using the keyboard and the mouse. I'm gonna show you what you see playing behind the scenes, which is a demo that I created to demonstrate some of those features. And I'm also gonna walk you through the process of adding a prefab, looking at the new input system, how to set up the player settings, so that you can actually use this functionality. So let's jump into Unity and I start looking at it. All right guys, so today I'm gonna to show you how the XR device simulator works. So if we go here, this is the demo that comes from Unity Technologies Exact Interaction Toolkit Examples. And it's the same demo that I've been showing you in all my videos. So some of the things that I want you to know is that this scene is the one that comes in that demo, the world interaction demo. And this one is only compatible with the action-based input system. And whenever you're setting up a project, you wanna make sure that you go to File, Build Settings, then go into Player Settings. And this is where you tell Unity what input system to use. So if you look at it right now, the active input handling is set to all. And if I look in here, this is the one for Android. If I look at the one for PC, Mac, and Linux, that one is also set to all. So we wanna make sure that we use either both or you use new. So I'm gonna change it to new. And I wanna make sure that, you know, the project is actually going to close automatically and then reopen. Once it reopens, we should be able to use what's called the actions type input system, which is the new input system from Unity, like I was saying. And what that's going to allow us is to use the XR device simulator prefab, which is the one that we're gonna need in order for us to mimic what the bindings would be for running this on, for example, on the Oculus Quest. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that that's set to new. And if we go into a PC here, I also want to make sure that one is set to new. So it looks like they're both set to new. And right now, if I were to hit play, it's actually going to try to run either with the Oculus Link or to run, well, actually it's going to try to run with the Oculus Link. And you can see that it you know, has this pop-up. I, I don't have the device connected, so that's why I'm getting that pop-up. And it also will tell you that, you know, the unable to start the Oculus XR plugin and, and so on. So we can just ignore those for now. I'll just show you how, how to get this working. So if we go into a window and then go into the package manager, you're gonna see that I have the XR Interaction Toolkit because that's, that's basically what I'm using in this scene. And there's two different samples here. One is going to be the default input actions. And what that is, if you go to project and you look at samples, those are gonna be the sample basically input actions that Unity created for us. So if I go here and I expand this, you're gonna see that they already created mappings for the actions such as, you know, whenever we, we need to grab an item in here, those actions will come from the device. So that's already been mapped with the new input system. So if I go into the XR rig demo and we were to expand this and you go into the camera offset, let's say that we wanna look at the left hand, you're gonna see that the action-based controller manager is already pointing to some of these ones because Unity already did the mapping for us. And if I go into one of those and we open it up, we're gonna see something like this. And this is, you know, the new, input system for Unity, you can see that they have different action maps and each of them maps to different, basically different control, different controls on the controller. And for instance, like if you want to do a turn, the turn provider is gonna be mapped to the primary to the axis. And it also has, you know, whether it's gonna be a continuous move. In this case, you know, when we're turning, we're not gonna be doing a continuous move. So this is basically set to true. But anyways, let me show you how we can set up the, the actual XR device simulator. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna click in here and it's going to import it into that same folder, except it's gonna be on the preview that seven. You're gonna see that in there. And I couldn't find any documentation on it, so which is why I decided to do this video. So if I go here, you're gonna see that there's a prefab called the XR device simulator. And if I go ahead and, and were to, if I were to hit play and try to control the scene, because I know if I hold the right mouse click, I should be able to move around, but I can't. And I can because I haven't really told Unity that I want to basically simulate some of the actions from the device by using either my mouse or my keyboard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag this component here. And if you go and drag it and drop it, you're gonna see that this has a bunch of different bindings. You know, it binds the keyboard X for translation, the Y for translation, toggles, the mouse delta action, and then, you know, the grip, trigger buttons on the, on the actual controller. And then you also have different options in here to change you know, the speed of when you're translating on X, when you're translating on Y, when you're moving, you know, rotating on the, on the mouse. 
So let's go ahead and try it out and see what happens now if I were to hold my, my right mouse click. So now I can actually move around. So that's basically simulating me wearing the headset and actually trying to move. So what happens if I hold the right mouse click and then I start scrolling with my mouse by you know, using the, the little scroll? You can see that I can, I can actually move back. And what I can also do is if we go here, maybe I'll just put this guy right here. I just want you to see what's happening on the symbio. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. And I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna hold my right click and then I start scrolling. I'm gonna see how the camera, this item right here, is, a start, is starting to get in. And then, you know, it goes in close, basically it's going back, backward. And then what I can also do is to say that I want to start rotating. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold my right mouse click and then also hold the scroller. You can see that now I can rotate around. And if you look at the same view, you can also see that the camera is now getting rotated. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna just go ahead and press V and then it's going to reset the position of the camera. So I hold my mouse, my right mouse click and then hit V and it resets it. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, you know, hold right mouse click again and then I scroll back so that I can see both of the controllers. So what if I wanted to move the, the controller? So I'm gonna hold shift and now I'm gonna move my mouse around without clicking on anything. You guys can see how the, the controller is now moving. What about actually resetting the position of the left controller because I already moved it. So we can hold shift because it's activating that and then hit V it's going to snap back into the original position. What if I wanted to move both the right and the left? Well, let me move the left one a little bit by holding shift and then moving my mouse. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the right one. I'm gonna hold the space bar and then move my, my mouse. So what if I wanted to move both of them? So now what I can do is I can hold shift and space at the same time. And now I can move both of the, you know, both of the controllers, which is actually really powerful because we don't need to build two device. So what if I wanted to, you know, now I want to rotate both of them at the same time. So I'm moving my mouse, but if I hold the scroller on my mouse, I can now rotate. And you can see that the ray on the left controller, it's just starting to, you know, it's basically finding a selection, which in this case is the cube. And if I move to the right, you can see that it's also, it's also working. Let's see if I can find another one, the one it's selecting that one. Okay, so now what if I wanted to move one independently? Well, I'm just gonna move that one. What if I wanted to grab it? So I'm going to hold shift because you know that's how I select that controller. And then I'm gonna hold the G, G button on my keyboard. And then now I'm going to be able to you know, move it around. What if I wanted to rotate that, rotate that and then place it perhaps on top of that? I can let go of shift and, and G and now it's going to let go. I can now also hold my mouse, like I say, my, I can also pan around if I wanted to. So I am clicking, I'm basically selecting the right mouse click and then moving my mouse around. And I can also do that. I can also hold control and then right click. And then I can also look around and see what else is available. And that, you know, also works. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold shift and it's in basically space bar and then V and it's going to snap them to the original position. I still don't know how to rotate, how to reset the rotation, but that's okay. I know, I know what we need to do to get him kind of like to align. So another thing that I can also do is let's say that I want to I want to actually do a snap turn. So I can hold shift key and then the A, or if I wanna to go to the right, I can hold shift and then D. And I can also, you know, I can go from left to right and that's basically how I can test the snapping of the position. So what if I wanted to teleport to another area? So I wanna teleport with my, my left one and you can do it with both controllers, but I'm going to do that. So I'm holding shift basically to move it around. I'm going to hold my scroll button on my mouse just to select a position that I want to teleport to. Then I'm gonna hold B while I'm holding shift on my keyboard. And then it's gonna to try to rotate it as well a little bit so that I can snap to that location. I'm gonna do shift D to, let me see if I can do that again. There we go, okay, there we go. And I'm gonna just go ahead and rotate it and then hold my B. Let's see, let's do shift and then B. And then I'm gonna rotate, see if I can get into that other location. I'm going to do Shift and B again. And I'm still learning, guys, so that's why I'm trying to look up what, how I can teleport. I can also teleport to that area. We can also teleport to this area. I'm going to do Shift A. Let me do that again. Shift A so that I can go to that location. I'm gonna see if I can grab the, the animal right there. And let me see if I can hold my B button here. There we go. 
and get closer. And I'm gonna hold, I think I can just do the, the right, there we go. I can do the right mouse click and then I scroll back. That way I can see more of the, more of the area of the camera. So I can do that and I'm still scrolling back and scrolling forward. You can see how that works. I'm gonna do a shift on the, on the left controller. And then I'm gonna use the scroll, the scroller to basically, you know, get closer or get, or get further away from the item that I want to select. So what I can do now is I can also hold shift. And you can see how I am basically selecting the, the animal. I don't know why I can't remember the name of that animal, but you're gonna make, you're gonna basically make fun of me on the video. But I'm going to basically rotate it and then you can see how I can do that. If I want to get it closer, closer to me, I actually rotate it. You can see how I can, I can rotate that. I can also get closer to me this way. I can just get it. And I can also click, basically do left click on it and I'm going to start shooting bubbles. So that's basically everything that I wanted to show you. There's also a lot of things. Oh, there's one more thing that I wanna, that I wanna show you that is going to help you with this. If you wanna know what keys are available for you so that you can find out exactly what keys to use, you can go into window and then analysis. And if you go into the XR, actually the input debugger, the input debugger, you can snap it in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit play and I'm gonna show you everything that is available. And that's how I was able to find some of the keys that I, that I needed to simulate. So you can see that anything that starts with XRI is going to be the, what comes from the actual device. But anything that doesn't start with that, it's going to be, you know, how you can control it with the, with the keyboard or the mouse. So in my case, you know, I wanted to know how I can actually grab an item. So here it tells you, okay, keyboard G, what about, you know, how I can also, you know, move the position of the camera. You can expand this and it's going to tell you that. Also, if you want to change the translation on the C-axis, you can you know, hold A or D, and it's going to show you how to do that. Another cool thing as well, like it, let's say that you wanted to find out how to, how to accelerate the keyboard translate speed. So let's go ahead and hit play, and let's see if I can, if I can show you. So right now this is set to 0.2, and I'm basically translating, but it's a little bit slower is low, so what if I wanted to, let's do that maybe three times as, mu as much. And we can also, you guys can see how that works. Let's go ahead and do that and see, let's do, well, I'm translating on, with the X axis on the, on the mouse. Let's do perhaps a larger number in here. You guys can see how that, it's incrementing the speed. You can also do the same thing with this one. Let's go ahead and do maybe a much higher on the Y axis for the mouse. You guys can see how that it's changing that. So anyways, you can change some of these parameters to change the speed of, you know, how fast you're moving with the keyboard, how fast you're moving with the mouse, and also the rotation. So if we wanted to change, say, the rotation to be much higher, we can also do that. And let's see if that, so you're gonna get dizzy if you, if you increment that number a lot, you know, to be a lot higher. But that gives you an idea of what is available. And the other thing you can also do if you wanted to look at what is associated with what, you can go into you know any one of these components on the XR rig demo. You can also open, so for instance, if you wanted to know how teleport is activated, how the teleporting is canceled, how the turn is activated and move and so on, you can double click in here and it's going to tell you exactly what, what the actual binding is. And then you can map that out to what the, basically the simulator is doing on its own bindings by looking at the input debug. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. If you guys have any other questions, please let me know. Thank you.